So the first item is uh, conservation mission Jenny Allen. Allen. Come on up. Uh, just tell a little about yourself and why you're interested in this mission, please. Sure. My name is Jenny Allen. Um, I've lived in South Woodstock for almost the last two years. I have a background in environmental issues. Um, my college degrees are in that topic and I've worked for the last 20 years in different capacities on environment and conservation issues, including climate change related things. Um, I work remotely from my home, so I'm looking for a way to get more involved in the community and this seemed like a, a good fit with my skill set. Have you been to the meeting? No, not yet. Have you taken a look at the town plan by chance? I did a while back. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? I have no questions. One position, Eric? Yeah, I and mean, the uh, trustees always already voted in favor uh, last week. Absolutely. Great. Make a motion to approve Jenny Allen for the Conservation Commission. Second. I would second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank for your enthusiasm. Okay, additions and deletions? Uh, just an executive session. Okay. What do you want to do that? Uh, we can do it at the end. Um, and do we want to discuss the personnel policy at all as a board, or we want to wait until the joint meeting next week? I want to make a quick joint meeting. Yeah, so we can get rid of uh, H then. I would just say I'm very pleased by the personnel policy. I think it represents a step forward and offering um some amenities that our uh, employees haven't had for a while and i think it makes clear a lot of definitions and roles um so i i'm in full support thank you citizen comments i see none online right. yeah so a few things um one uh with the heat wave currently going on in Woodstock and around the Northeast. Uh, we urge residents to be safe, uh, but if you need help, either call 911, 211, or Town Hall, and we'll do what we can to uh, help you as soon as possible. Um, second, because there won't be um, a meeting before this, uh, I just want to remind residents that the Woodstock July 4th celebration is going to be on July 5th, the Friday. Um, same normal time, same normal activity, it's just one day different. Uh, so please join us on Friday, July 5th for fireworks and fun um, at the high school. Um, next, uh, good news, bad news. Uh, in the audience is Chris Barr, who today uh, became the new director of public works for Woodstock. Uh, Chris has been with Woodstock for about six years, uh, most recently the village foreman. Um, we're very excited to have Chris and experience um, on, on, on our staff and to help us lead us through hopefully a quiet summer um, and then gear up for uh, what I'm sure will be a busy winter. So I want to uh, just appreciate Chris uh, applying and again the job and excited to work with them going forward. Thank you. And he'll be here later to help on uh, Quinn Road if, if needed by the board. Um, finally, uh, Nikki Lavakis uh, gave her two week notice last week. Um, her last day is going to be uh, next Friday. Um, Nikki was very helpful when I uh, started here. I not knowing anything. She was a wealth of information. Uh, she continued to be so. Um, she also helped a lot with HR, as you know, with this personnel policy we were, we've been discussing, but also with internal policies uh, throughout the last year. I just want to thank her for her um, service and her work. Uh, we'll get one more chance to bother her next week for her, her final joint meeting. Uh, I just want to thank her publicly for all the work she did. Good luck, Nikki. Okay. Thank you, Nikki. Yep, that's all I have. I had some questions. So okay. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to know if the paving in the village is done for sidewalks, and I wanted to know if there was an update about the uh, flag theft over Pride. So I'll leave the flag uh, question to the Chief Swanson when he gets up in a minute, just so he can answer that. Um, 
but the sidewalk pavement is done. Uh, we're still waiting to do Ford and High Street for uh, paving the street. Um, the sweeper broke and they couldn't pave until we fixed the sweeper. Uh, Chris is one of his first acts. Uh, fix, got the, the sweeper fixed for tomorrow. Uh, so he's gonna coordinate with them. And as soon as we can go sweep those two streets, they'll come plow and be, and be finished. Yeah, thank you. An report? Um, as presented to the board, uh, we're ending the fiscal year. Um, we're a little more close than we like to be uh, just due to still carrying about a quarter million dollars on our uh, general ledger due to the, the FEMA disaster. Uh, we've been working with FEMA. Our requests are at the final stage. Uh, a few have been obligated, which means we'll get the money uh, relatively soon. Um, but we'll probably happen is we'll probably end up seeing the money coming in near the end of the summer. Uh, and so we might have just a smaller uh, deficit a year end. Um, that'll be offset with the revenue that comes in. Uh, we've had a very good year revenue wise to offset that. Um, so we're in a good financial position, uh, but that FEMA one is gonna kind of make the general ledger look a little funky for now. Thank you. Please Chief. Uh, so Chief Swanson is here. Um, as you know, um, the town and the village signed a new contract uh, for police coverage for uh, the next fiscal year. That starts on July 1. Um, one of the things we talked about in that contract was having uh, the select board be more informed by what's going on uh, townwide. Uh, so Chief Swanson is going to present hopefully quarterly to the, to the select board going forward. Uh, the new contract that will go in effect July 1. Um, I'm sorry if I'm stepping on your toes here, uh, but it kind of gives the town more coverage. Uh, traditionally, the um, contract called for about 40 hours of coverage in the town. Um, this agreement is more flex, so we kind of give the chief and the officers more flexibility to go into the town more often. So if they're on a village shift, they can still go into the town, they can still go do a patrol, they can still go up to South Woodstock or West Woodstock or Cassville uh, without getting in trouble. Uh, so the town should see more coverage. Um, they're going to be tracking uh, the patrols they do in Woodstock, uh, so we'll know where they're at, uh, what coverage they're presenting. So if people have concerns, they're not seeing enough coverage, we can then adjust where we have them being uh, for, for visibility's sake. Um, so it's a new process. I think both, we're all excited to see how it works out. Uh, and you'll start seeing that, if not now, by July 1. Yeah, we've um, during the discussions and in... in uh anticipation of the new the new policy we've kind of slow rolled it out in that i didn't want to strictly enforce an old rule that we knew was changing only to try and then correct new behavior that was then ingrained um so we've really um i think really kind of just been working on this new new format um for the last few months i think it's working very well the the officers like it because they're not so confined to a one square mile, <laughs> so it gives them a little more room to kind of explore and on their shift. Um, it also kind of fills a gap with alarm, with responding to alarms when there's not a town officer on. Um, so well, there's no uh, no longer at the. Is this an alarm that we need to bring someone in for or not? We just have the officer go and handle it. So I think it's I think it's a, a good a good policy for um, what we have with the contract in our community. Uh, can you speak a little bit about uh, Liz and then also uh, if there's any updates on the Pride Flags? Uh, so yeah, uh, Liz Turco graduated from the level three of the full-time police academy on May 31st. Um, has been on shift now for two. I think two weeks, two full weeks, and um, is back to loving it and um, excited to be around. Uh, there is no bites yet on uh, identifying the people on my Facebook post. Yeah. Um, People's Bank does have, or M&T Bank does have some video. They've preserved it for me. I'm in the process of writing a subpoena, which um, 
it's only, you know, it doesn't take too long to write one, but once I write it, it goes to the prosecutor's office, goes to the court. So it's really the two or three week process. So we'd probably be looking at a few months before I actually get the video back from the bank after getting the subpoena. Um, by then it's a little probably dead, but um, we'll see what happens. Any questions from the board? No, I think, I mean, I think we're looking forward to the new contract terms, and I know that there's concern, especially about coverage in South Woodstock, so I think it'll be nice to hear from our South Woodstock residents and how they feel about the change um, moving forward. And one thing that the sergeant and I have talked about is um, being strategic with tracking yeah. um, and keeping track of in, you know, in real time during a work week where officers have been. Um, rather than just kind of looking at the end of the month and yeah, every month is just, everyone's at White Cottage, <laughs> at least in the summer. Yeah. Um, so I think that, I think that will work. Um, something I probably should have brought up in the meeting before Joe, but um, in terms of planning ahead, I know maybe it's been brought up. We have, this is the time of year we have like a lot of parades and stuff like that. In terms of like how that impacts patrol and coverage, is that something we should be mindful of? Par parades are uh, la very labor intensive. Yeah. Very, I think we had 13 or 14 people um, working this last alumni parade, which means we brought in part-time dispatchers to help direct traffic. Yeah. Um, Michelle, who's our administrative supervisor, came in to help direct traffic. Um, I think it's pretty disruptive in general to the to the flow of traffic um, because it goes down Route 4, which is the main thorough for, thoroughfare for New England, really. So um, I'm not a huge fan of parades. Yeah. <laughs> There's also, I assume, a cost associated with that. Yeah, very, very high cost. That doesn't, for the legacy parades, we call them the memorial veterans, alumni, and um, Wasail, we don't bill for those, so like, but they pay the same. Um, so we we eat that for now, which is is what it is. Yeah. Everything else pays for it. Yeah, yep. Um, before we let the chief go, um, there's a, on the agenda of Vermont 100 endurance race. Are you aware of that? No, I'm not. Um, so let me just. That one, I think, usually our constable. It's Tassel Bridge down through Dunham Hill. Um, to make sure you're okay with it. Yeah, I have no issues with it. That's been a for ever. Thirty. Yeah, and our, I think uh, for traffic control for that, the um, constable doesn't move from location to location. Okay, throughout perfect. The day, so we don't. Um, I don't think anticipate needing any officers for that. Okay. Great. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Look away. So same as always, Ben. Uh, I know Susan's here, so um, usually we are uh, you um, approve them with uh, the, the assumption of the state's doing the due diligence. Um, there's no outstanding fees on any of them, um, so. I would make a motion we approve the four liquor licenses subject to the assumption that the state's reviewing them since they don't give us the materials to do so. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Next is the energy service. So I was told after the fact that Ray, you've already signed this. Um, so oh, yeah, <laughs> if that's the case, I think we're all set. Um, I will say, uh, I think I said this before, um, I was less than impressed with what we, the um, staffing we had previous to Harry. Um, Harry has been um, excellent. Um, he's been responsive. He's been um, proactive. Um, he did the majority of the work to get a congressional appropriation through uh, the Senator's office that's now in front of Congress. Uh, that can give the town $2 million towards the wastewater plant. Uh, and so he did that work. 
Um, so just on that alone, I'm very happy with him, uh, but he's been very good with kind of coming through, giving us advice and working with different committees and people. Uh, so I think he's been a, a very good addition to us so far. He's also, I mean, I think we'll find a way to fold him into the conversations with our polls as well. Yeah. yeah. One concern I have is the turnover in this position. I mean, it's great that we have somebody that is um, fitting our needs, but I think it's like the third or fourth person we've had. So yeah. um, I don't know how, you know, that we don't employ them. So I don't know how we address that, but it is a concern. Yeah, valid point. Nope, oh, yeah, go ahead. Hi, excuse me. Hi, it, I can't see. Is Harry there or no? Uh, he's not now. Oh. Okay, yeah, it was a little later on the agenda. Yeah, I just wanted to um, pop in because I am technically the um, the representative from Woodstock that works with Harry um, on the committee for IREC, and um, I it sounds like there aren't any issues that need to be voted on, so that makes it really easy. Um, happy to answer questions and then yeah the um harry is our third iraq person the first one jeff martin was around for quite a while and then we basically kind of had that interim person who didn't didn't really stick around a full year um and now we have harry and we don't have any direct power over hiring with two rivers, but Harry was already employed through two rivers before he came to us in this position. Um, so I've been really impressed by his dedication to the area, uh, to Woodstock and local towns. And he already has like a really great demonstrated interest in working with two rivers and local, local issues and local government. So I feel really great about having him on board and the longevity of his role, but, um, just wanted to speak to that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The Vermont 100 endurance race. If you say so. I've been on the committee with Vermont 100 for somewhere between 15 and 20 years. I coordinate all of the communications. Um, I work with Kelly for uh, the uh, the traffic here in Woodstock, and all of our emergency communications are more coordinated through Hartford Dispatch. So if we have an emergency in Woodstock, we go to Hartford, and then they contact. They do all uh, nine towns for us. We just go to Hartford Dispatch, and they take care of it from there for us. So you have the map. Um, I don't know all the road names that we come down, but as an event, we are very gracious to all the towns that let us come through. And if you didn't know, this is an, a benefit for Vermont Adaptive Ski and Sport that started in uh, Scutney some almost 40 years ago. Right. Questions for the event? You want? Just no. runners or is this horses too? Horses and runners. Yeah. And to date, we're the last event that does horses and runners at the same time. So it, it is a magical event. <laughs> have the insurance? Yeah. I think Astrid probably sent you the insurance and demand yeah. others. Yeah. So motion. I'll make a motion to approve the application for the Vermont 100 endurance race. A second. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. Next up is Long Hill Road, Long Hill Farm Quinn Road. Yeah, I'm Brad Ruderman. Working for David Stanett. Susan, yeah. may I bring some plans up? Sure. Yeah. Really, what the goal here is is David wants to build a house up on the hill here, and this is the existing house, and this is Quinn Road, the class three section. From here on up, it's class four, and it continues out towards Long Hill. Um, we would like to improve 
about 1,200 feet of, class, of the class four section. Uh, we've got some pictures of uh, the improvement would involve, it's a, it's a fairly narrow road at the beginning, at the entrance, this is where the, the gate is at the class four where it starts. Um, this is pretty significant uh, down slope stone wall and berm that we could add two to three feet of fill to bring this roadbed up to widen it while also creating an upslope ditch. Uh, so really, it's, it, we wouldn't try to save, you know, this several maples that align this road all the way up. And rather than trying to peel those back, work to raise the bed up and widen the, you know, make it a 12 foot drive path with an upslope swale. And then we'd have pull-offs every 500 feet. Typically on the downslope side, but there's probably a couple of portions of sections we put up upslope also. Mm -hmm. And then once we get to where the class four section spurs off and becomes private drive, um, that would be, you know, we would come in for a, a zoning permit to uh, construct this drive, which is which is actually a moderate rate. The whole thing is, you know, there's sections of this road that might be at eleven and a half percent, and the same with the drive, but most of it get up on, on the road itself. Uh, so really we're just we're coming in with just the beginning of trying to get approval and start going to zoning on and this is really the, the key to get this thing. So you're just looking for the class four road just the class right four now. road right now. Yep. Um, this would be the entrance. So is that where that landing is where the gate is where you're gate's right peeling here. off? Yeah, yep. and here's the landing. Yeah. The former sugar house that would be a turnaround uh, yeah. for emergency vehicles fire trucks once the class four is established who's going to be on the hook for maintenance it would be the landowner it would have to yeah. be. um we're not asking you know to upgrade yep. this to a class three um, it's understood that this would be at the owner's expense and maintenance one uh i got a couple concerns one is the snowmobile trail too off season so yeah is there room enough to get something on the other side and the, um otherwise that get that gets a fair amount of traffic and if you're only going to be 12 feet wide um i'm just looking ahead so there isn't a problem <laughs> so the snowmobile it enters quite a ways up from the gate right doesn't it come up on robinson's property yeah. Yep, and then and we then go all the way up to class four. All the way up here. Yeah. So you wouldn't, you're looking for something else rather than traveling on the driveway. Somebody's going to have to give, uh, if it's only 12 feet, I would think it'd be a pain in the butt for the owners to meet snowmobiles all the time. Is that Stan's Rob, Robinson's yeah. land on the low Dave's side? Side. Yes. Where does Dave start in? Up by the land then on the other side? Uh, so are you looking maybe a, a separate path on the property for snowmobiles? Eventually, I think it's. Are you worried about just the traffic coming up and down with from this residence with snowmobiles coming up and down? Yeah. 12 feet is not very wide. Not if you're going to have essentially two lanes, two people that are a car and a snowmobile. Um, and the pull ups wouldn't be sufficient for somebody to be able to pull off. I think eventually down the line it's going to be a problem, but maybe if the, we can move the trail. The other thing is when we go through with a tucker, we take up the whole thing and we can't back up very easy with that drag on there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how wide do you think or we could widen the, you know, that section? Well, three our trails are a minimum 12 feet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Snowmobile doesn't need that much, but our drags do. Because mm -hmm. we're not. Unless you could cut a trail next to it. Next to it. I which mean, would be requiring, we'd have to talk to Stan. Well, it's kind of that a, or go on to Dave's property. But yeah, it's kind of steep up there. You have to find the bank to get Otherwise, you guys would have put the road there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's flatter on Stan's side. Yeah. So that's my one of my concerns. The other concern that I have is there's a lot of water that comes off from this 
log landing now and goes into the class four road. Does it come right down? This Something happened years ago after it got logged and that tail end of it, um, there's no place for the water to go. So you don't really notice it till it's winter time. Um, there's no snow there and we're running over boulders with the tucker going down through there. So if there's any way possible, we could so, so redirect yeah. that while you guys are making that turn around. That would be awesome. Are you talking about that water for us? No, beyond not, the log yard. It goes across. That's fine. Right through here. Oh, but this wet area here. Yeah. On the other side's yeah. that field. And it comes down out of here somehow. Um, Maybe we can redirect our drainage to. Because we were going to try to approach Dave Steinet on the snowmobile end of it to see if we could do anything with that because it's in such a ravine, we can't, you can't get around it. Down point, put that ditch in down here and it drains all into your road. And yeah. we can turn that, go back up the road. Yeah, if we could do that, cold. yeah, that would be awesome if we could do that. Plus, if you're going to have water going into the town road, it's going to end up going somewhere else anyway. But um, and then the other thing would be we should the gate should be moved up above from here up to somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah relocate. I mean, I got no problem with it. I'm just looking ahead that it's going to be a problem. For snowmobiles and yeah. to make sure the drainage is right. So back to this, you know, swath for the snowmobiles. Um, this is a you know fifty foot right of the three rod right. Yeah. yeah. Last four is one. If we really need to go another twelve feet, or can we get away with a fifteen or sixteen foot? Yeah, but you don't want to cut any trees, right? We don't want to. Yeah. That might I don't. Be I don't blame you. Into that at a, yeah. At that point. And there's a stone wall there too. I mean, I wouldn't want to do that either. But um, hmm. I, I'm just looking ahead that that might be a problem down the road. Um, cars coming up, snowmobiles going down. Mm -hmm. um, if we could get a trail off to the side somehow, that'd be great. Oh, on stands um, probably. Mostly. Yeah, that would be the problem. Okay. That would be the problem. So I don't know if because Mark was the one that looked at this originally, if Chris should go up and look and see, um, do a site yeah, visit man. to um, go over that. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mark was there in January. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so how uh, time sensitive is this process for you coming to the like what approval? Uh, you know, we're looking for it as soon as possible. Uh, Obviously. Yeah, so we have um, another joint meeting next Tuesday um, okay. from 5 to 6.30, and then we'll have another one July 9th. Yep. Um, so if Chris has a chance to go up there in the next few days, talk to the boards, we can either pack this on to next Tuesday or July 9th okay. um, if they if they want to pick it up for another vote. Digital versions of these that yes. you could send, that would be amazing. Yep. And what are you putting in for fill? Crushed stone. Like, yep. Uh, not yeah. not just overburden. You know, no, no. Put road material in sub base yeah. all the way up. New culverts where the road water yeah. bars are. Um, stone line a uh, ditch. Anything that's over five. I mean, the whole thing's over five percent. Yeah. Yeah. So really, that's our so the water coming off the landing and the width of the travel path. It's just a eventually it's going to be an issue. I guess. We the snowmobile club always gets stuck moving it. We don't have any money. Yep. It's, it's it's an endless endless battle every year. Um, and not that we'd have to. I mean, we can still run the class four road, but I'm just looking ahead to try to appease everybody. Okay. Um, well, it could be a safety issue at some point. Yeah. I suppose Absolutely. it could be. Um, I mean, if you really want to look at look at it that way, it could very well be a liability issue. I mean, sure. The Tucker could go down it because that's not a big deal, but the snowmobiles is what sometimes turns into a a deal. Okay. okay. Great. If you want to put together some of your concerns and pass on to Chris and Chris can get up there sometime this week and take a look at it. Uh, we can pick it up at some point this okay. week. Like, yeah. That's best for you. I think I've got you on an email chain, so I'll reach out to you. Okay. 
um, Thursday. That's for me. Okay. Sounds good. I'll, I'll reach out to you. Greg, do you want to be a part of that? Or? I can't. <laughs> Well, but I couldn't do it till the afternoon. Thursday afternoon. Want to do that? That's ninety-eight. <laughs> one o'clock. I got a meeting at eleven. <laughs> That's all. You want to say Thursday at one? Yeah. Okay. I can do that. We'll meet you right at the, at the gate. There. Okay. okay. Turn around and park. Bob, take us up there. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you guys. Thursday at one. Yeah. <laughs> Remind me. <laughs> Have a good evening. Thanks, Thanks Chris. Chris. Okay, then we have the Echoad Bog signage. So they're not here. Uh, I think last year they were interested in having a sign put up. Um, they come back this year to see if the sign could be put up, um, just so people know where the bog potentially is. Um, I don't know if they got confused by the agenda item, the time, and are coming in later. So if the board has questions, we can postpone it until hopefully uh, they come on. Or if you're okay with having the sign put up there, then you can vote now. Yeah, I would just want to see what the sign is. And I, I mean, if they're going to raise the money for it, that's wonderful. It's great. Um, but I just maybe want to see what it looks like. And if there's... It's, it's, it's having it designed. They're having it designed. So this is just to say what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's not saying it keep out. No. It's actually I think to um it's just, to help it's to help it's, this person from having to answer questions, maybe. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go on. Yeah, I'm I'm I think I would just approve it with uh, conditional on seeing the sign. That's fine. Okay. Give a sec. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unfinished. All right. Uh, next, uh, uh, two fund requests. So I'll take them one by one. Um, the first one is uh, the both in the sewer uh, operating line. Um, the first is a line flusher. Uh, $28,000. It was allocated in the operating line. It should have been in the capital line for the budget. So this is a request for the select board to approve us just moving it from the operating line to the capital line. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, something similar, uh, stay in the sewer line. Um, there's a South Woodstock bond repayment and interest payment. Um, my understanding is a few years ago, the board decided to start raising and saving money for the South Woodstock uh, wastewater plant. The problem that has happened is it's always been put into the operating line. Um, so it happens at the end of the fiscal year when it's not spent, it falls down into a, our undesignated fund balance instead of being saved somewhere else. So it's technically hasn't been saved anywhere. Uh, so what I'm requesting is a, a select board moves this to an assigned fund uh, it will be the South Woodstock uh, Wastewater Assigned Fund. And so that money will stay allocated just to the South Woodstock Fund. Um, and then in the next meeting or so, I'm going to come back with a few requests for undesignated fund balance. But one of them is going to be to track how much money of the South Woodstock bond payment has gone unfunded, the unfunded, the undesignated fund balance. Um, and I ask the board to move all that money to this assigned fund. So all the money that was allocated for that will be there to start paying the bond payments when it comes due. Uh, so I'm looking for a motion to um, move the South Woodside bond repayment um, principal and interest accounts uh, to an, a, an assigned fund. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So baby guidelines. Yep, so a while ago, and this is, uh, Susan reminded us of this. Um, you know, I think in the past, um, when sewer abatements have come up, we've, the board has kind of made the decision kind of on the fly, uh, depending on circumstances, the person talking, whether they're in the room or not in the room, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it was her idea to kind of 
um, put together some guidelines that the board could um, either vote to follow um, or vote to recommendably follow. So when there was abatement in front of us, uh, two things can happen. One, internally, we can tell um, the residents that this is what the site board's gonna follow. If it fits in, you can be on the agenda. If it doesn't fit in, it's not gonna be approved, save everyone time. Um, but also when someone is in front of the board, the board has some guidelines to go off of or whether you should abate the cost or not. Um, so we looked at this a few months ago, but it might be a nice look at it again, see if we want to make any changes um, to it. And Susan, I don't know if you want to hop in with anything. Yeah, I was just going to add that this is based on the um, statutory abatement um, procedure for real estate taxes. So I didn't invent it. It's, it's what the... Um, Board of abatement has to look at when someone comes and asks for an abatement in their taxes. You could have said you invented it, Susan. I would have given you credit. Uh, <laughs> somebody might know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is great. Thanks to Susan for putting this together. Yeah. We have to vote on this. Oh, we yeah. do? Okay. If you want it as presented, yeah. um, and what you'd be doing, you would vote it on to use this. Um, as a guidelines to approve or not approve abatements. Yeah, I would move to accept this as presented to use as a guideline. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 John, you're up. You uh, thanks. Uh, we have two. Um, grants that we are asking the select board to approve. They've both been approved unanimously by the EDC. The first is a $600 grant to maintain Teagle's Landing between now and, and uh, or actually it's really between Memorial Day and uh, the, the end of the fall. Uh, Cy Benoit has agreed to uh, some part of that pro bono and, and the rest um, uh, actually, the, he's agreed to do the kind of initial cleanup because no one is maintaining it, um, it, it uh, on a pro bono basis, and then um, the rest of it for six hundred dollars. Um, there is no documentation of this. This was a verbal discussion. It sort of happened quickly. We, we were very comfortable doing it. We don't think this is an ongoing expense for the EDC. We, well, I will talk to the trustees again about this. But in the meantime, it was a small amount of money, and it was important to get it done by. Uh, Memorial Day and then continue it throughout the season. So you, my suggestion is that you, if you w do grant this, that you grant it conditional on us receiving a written proposal, which will simply be a paragraph or two from Cy. Um, uh, and then the second one, if you wanted to vote these together or separately, the second one is uh, a the the same grant that we've given the last, I guess, three or four years to the chamber for downtown beautification for flowers, certain expenses for flowers. Some of it is capital. Some of it is, I think, watering costs and the flowers themselves. Um, and then the holiday lights, which is mostly the actually entirely the purchase of the lights, which kind of have to be purchased every year because they don't they can't they you need to purchase them every year. They can't be reused. Um, because they, they get beaten up and torn up and so forth. Um, this was part of the community grant process in January. It was submitted as a grant and the grant proposal is attached. Um, the EDC was very supportive of the grant proposal in January, but we didn't, what we were under the impression at the time that there was going to be a major downtown integrated proposal put forward very soon after. That's been now delayed. And there's a lot of different discussion about how it could be accomplished and whether it should be the EDC or perhaps a private group that might start up uh, with philanthropic support. Uh, we, in effect, have a kind of an implicit verbal uh, assurance to the hit to the chamber that within our power, at least, we can only recommend to the select board that we would we wanted to fund this. And so, given the fact that it's now you know, not on the immediate horizon in the next couple of months that that this downtown proposal will either come before us or will be launched independently. Um, we we need to we wanted to make sure that this got paid for and the EDC was very supportive of paying for it. So that's for eleven thousand five hundred dollars. So we're proposing that the select board approve those those two grants. And I will say that there is a fair bit of work being done privately 
um, my hope actually is that a private group will emerge in the next 12 months to um, raise funds for and contribute to the town's downtown rejuvenation for the sorts of things that we are paying for here in this and that we've paid for in the past. But that's not, neither, that doesn't affect these grants. I'm just giving you a kind of a heads up that that's underway and I and not guaranteed, but. Are there any questions? Where, where's this money come from? It's a 1% uh, tax on lodging and, and food that uh, DB. Local option stuff. Um, I guess point of clarification, is Teagle's Landing owned by the village or the town? Village. It's owned by the village. Um, okay, I guess, John, I'm thankful for you putting this proposal together, thankful for the EDC putting this proposal together. I agree with you that the Teagle's Landing maintenance should not be an ongoing expense for the EDC. Um, my preference would be that this goes in front of the village, though I know that adds an extra step for you, um, because they should be maintaining the park. Um, in terms of downtown beautification, I I personally feel like I don't think I can support this grant or the approval of this grant. Um, we well, are you talking about this? You're talking about the Teagle's Landing or the other one? The other one. Okay. Sorry, I moved on to the lighting oh, yeah. and the flowers. Um, you know, I think that uh, I'm grateful to again the EDC for their work on the community grants program. We just sat through an hour long meeting talking about the deficiencies uh, internally in our town and most of them have to do with pay and infrastructure. And I personally feel like it would be irresponsible for me to vote for something like this, knowing the knowing the reality of of, of what our town is going through. Um, so yeah, that's what I'll say on that. Hi, John, I have a question. Um, I listened to that discussion back in January and there was some talk, if I remember correctly, of, of the chamber doing some fundraising. Did they do any fundraising? Yeah, the, I'm no. not, not, well, I mean, not to my knowledge. Uh, the, the, I, they, they are paying for some of the lighting and the flowers. I don't remember a, a small amount. I think it's actually, it's in the proposal. Hold on one second. It's in the grant. Um, it's 3,500 is what they're paying for. Um, which is and, and remind me what are what are what is the EDC proposing to contribute? Eleven thousand five hundred. This has been a just to give you sort of a flavor of the EDC's deliberations. You know, I think we felt that this was, um, I would say, universally supportive. I don't think we've ever had a person say we shouldn't be spending money on this. Now that that's not to Laurie, not to just uh, detract from the financial situation that we're in in the meeting that you just had and so forth. I completely understand that. Um, we, but nonetheless, I think there's very, very strong community support for those, for those things. And we don't think that the chamber can afford it. And we thought that it was, you know, one of our priorities is downtown beautification in the support of economic development. Um, I mean, so, I think with respect, John, that's a chamber problem if they can't afford it. Like that's, I, this has been a, you said, you know, at the beginning of the meeting, this has been something we've paid for for three years. And in my mind, this is a nice to have, not a need to have. I, yeah, the, I think there are, there are two intertwined, there are a couple of intertwined issues here. One is what should the chamber be able to afford and how much support should they be getting and so forth. And that's a, a, a very valid issue. Um, the, the um, There's a second issue about whether or not the funds from the EDC, what funds for the EDC should be, what's the purpose of it to be used for? Um, and so, for example, just to, add, just to use the alternative that you laid out, which is say pay gaps, you know, to close pay gaps, um, that if you look at the language and Eric has, you know, this isn't the time to discuss it. I, I mean, this isn't the great time to discuss it. I think we'll have a longer discussion when we have the meetings, you know, to talk about the priorities and so forth. And maybe it needs to be a longer discussion than we have available for that too. But if you look at the language about how the EDC was, uh, sorry, how the options tax was formed, no matter who spends it, th th there are two separate motions. One was to create an options tax and to put that money 
I'll put it simply, to the future. That's my one word summary of it. Uh, and then the second thing was to have the EDC be the advisory group that would recommend how that be spent. Whether it's the EDC or the select board or some new group or, or however we want to get spent, it's spent. Um, I think, you know, it's- To do push-ups. We, we need to, have, well, we just need to have a discussion about what it is that, that means investing in the future. Um, yeah. So, uh, so anyway, I, I understand your point of view, you know, I've, um, it, yeah. So whenever yeah. that we, I welcome, welcome that discussion. Um, yeah. And I don't disagree, John. I think, I think clarity from both sides is going to be helpful for, for both the EDC and for us. And, you know, I think that um, there have been times where the select board probably could have given you guys more guidance. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm, again, I'm appreciative for the time and effort for this application. I just, um, like I said, I, I think it's a nice yeah. to have. I respect your, yeah. I would still like to know, I, I mean, last year, that was supposed to be the last year that the lights and baskets were paid for. Then this year, they were supposed to get some grant. They were supposed to do some fundraising. My concern is they haven't. Yeah. Well, actually, Ray, I, I think the second half of that is definitely true. But the first half, I think that the, the EDC about a year, well, about 18 months ago, if I recall correctly, had a kind of a discuss had a discussion about whether or not we wanted to fund things more than one year or two years. In other words, were, was our job to to um, catalyze something and then it either succeeded or failed, or was our job to, or or would we also consider? I mean, clearly our job we think is to catalyze new things and so forth for growth. But would we also consider something that was on a recurring basis? And we decided that, and this was the example I think that we use that that. That doesn't mean that we have to fund it, but it it meant that we wouldn't reject it automatically because we'd been paying for it in prior years. That's something that had the kind of widespread support of the community and was consistent with what our priorities were in support of economic development. Then you know we were okay with that. So, but your point about the fundraising is correct. If you you know if you'd like us to, if you'd like to not make a decision now and for us to go back to the chamber uh, and and present the concerns that you you know that you are raising and and you know, we, we can do that. You know, I, I think that many things are true here at one time. Yes, the chamber is chronically in need and we have talked to them about raising more money for this in the past. And I think that they should. I do think that, you know, we have some big fiscal decisions to make as a town, but I also think that, that the lights and the flowers are not unimportant. And for like the kinds of goals that we have going forward, they're, you know, on a, relatively small expense for something that does make a big visual impact and helps distract from things like, you know, buildings crumbling. <laughs> so I do think it's an important investment, particularly if the chamber is not ready, ready to shoulder it. Um, I'm not saying they don't need, we don't need to change this going forward, but I, I think that if, if the decision is between having it or not having it this year, I'm in favor of having it because I do think that it has some short term importances that that, that aren't, um, that we just can't write off. Well, I, I, I yeah, uh, thank you. I, I just want to add one other thing, which is, hasn't been mentioned, but it's sort of, imp which hasn't been mentioned. And if I was sitting in your shoes, I might ignore this point, but this year, particularly because of the sequence of this, it puts us in an awkward position to not fund it um, because we sort of, again, it's not, we didn't have the authority and we made that clear that we can't, you know, that they know, the chamber and everyone knows that we can't simply say, you'll get the money and, and you know, it has to be approved by the select board. But because of the way we thought things were going to develop and then the way they have, the chamber has gone out and spent the money on, you know, spent the money on not the lights, but the flowers or most of it. Um, and leaving aside the fact of whether or not they should be in this financial condition, that is the financial condition they're in. So if, if, if that is, a, if that is a relevant factor to this year's decision for the flowers and the lights, um, you know, that would be, it's something that I would probably take into account, but I understand that you may or may not. Um, I will say that having the greater guidance, 
um, about having the discussion about what it is that we think these funds should be used for. Again, separately from who should decide how to use them. I mean, who should advise on how to use them? Again, this is not about the EDC. It's about what should the money be used for. Having that discussion will allow us to make this decision. You know, had we had that discussion prior to January, I think we would have had a different, we would be in this situation, but we're a little bit stuck and it's a small, you know, so I just want to raise that point. Again, you, it may be something that you choose not to take into account. Um, so I agree with Carrie that I don't, I don't think we want to not have the lights and not have the flowers and, but I also think that it is time for the chamber to, to think about, you know, next year that, you know, we send a strong message that this is just not something we think should, um, comes under the, the auspices of the economic development. And I know we'll have that discussion later. Uh, one of my kind of pet peeves is the fact that every year they come with, you know, skies, I don't know, some kind of blade and just cut the um, electric, the Christmas lights out of the trees. And I would love to see, you know, we're supposed to be trying to come to a more carbon neutral and sustainable um, point in our town. And I would love to see them invest in some kind of quality lights that don't just get cut out of the trees and thrown away every year. So just a pet peeve. I would be amenable to, given the time constraint to approving these with the condition, not approving Teagle's Landing, I think that should come from the village, but approving the chamber with the understanding either that they need to change the amount for this year or that we give them notice we're not going to fund it next year. You wanna make that motion? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, EDC permit for, or EDC application for flowers and lights uh, with the understanding that they will take on the full expense next year. Do a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then do we need a motion to deny Teagle's Landing? Yes. Can, sorry, can I just, just a technical point. I completely understand about denying Teagle's Landing because it should be a village responsibility. Um, but I think technically, well, actually, I don't really know technically. You have to, but we've never, we've never, I, we've never had the village approve anything or not. I don't know if they're authorized to or it's not. All, it's all select board approval anyway, always. Right. So, so perhaps. Whether it's village or town. So I think, yeah. You're perhaps right. the way to achieve it is, well, okay. I, I, well, I guess the way to achieve it is to reject it. And then we go, we go to the village. Can we, can we reject it, but compel them to fund it? So if no. you rejected your asking, but it's the, EDC. It's it's EDC funds anyway, isn't it? Yeah. So if not if we reject it. But the the trustees don't ever approve approve EDC funds. Only the select board does. Right. Yeah. So it could. Right. Yeah. So um, if the select board decides not to fund Teagle's Landing, the option is for the village to use their operating budget to fund this work, um, or for the village to come back to the select board and say, you fund the DPW, the DPW takes care of the parks, therefore you should fund $600 out of your operating line. So, I'm not opining on the on the motion, on who should pay. I'm just saying technically, I, I would feel uncomfortable going to them and they approve it. And then have, do so we- You'd still have to come parks? to us. <laughs> you know, the village would only approve the Teagle's Landing using their operating fund. Right. The select board can deny Teagle's right. Landing's permit for EDC funds, which means the money has to come from somewhere else, which would either be the village budget or the town DPW budget. Which is what the application suggests, that it should not be an ongoing economic development. Yeah. I, I don't. So the village has no public works budget. They do have, I believe, a parks budget. I'm not sure where they're at when spending on that, but that would be where the money would come from. But the EDC has looked at this and decided that you would like to fund it for this year. Yes. And that's what you're suggesting to us. Yes, to or to whomever. No, no. But I yeah. mean, I don't even know that it's legal. I, I mean, I don't know that the fact that the select board approves this is, I don't know how that was established. We've always, I mean, we're comfortable with it, but I mean, I don't think you want to have two different groups 
approving this, this yeah. box of funds. I'm not, yeah, and my, let me be clear, I'm not suggesting yeah. that the village trustees approve an EDC expenditure. I'm suggesting that we reject it as an EDC expenditure and have them approve it from their operating budget. Right. But then that wouldn't be John going to them. That would be them coming up with a plan for Teagle's Landing. John Which shouldn't be going to them to do anyway, right? Well, I mean, what should have happened is before anything was done, Teagle's Landing, the yeah. village trustees should have decided to fund that themselves and either hired someone through their funds, went through the permits. That's the way it should have happened. If someone has already agreed to do the work, outside of the scope of the municipality, that's not what should have happened. I totally agree. I apologize for that. And I, I will now put a firm stop to that ever happening again. You're totally right. That, that, that won't, expediency will not lead us to do this again, ever. <laughs> I don't mean the thing with the village and so forth. I mean, getting something where the work has begun and it took us long enough, longer to get it approved. He's just simply six, for 600 bucks it's not worth i i could make a recommendation the select board could out of um for purposes of making a stand reject this fee funding and have the town operating budget cover it just to make it clear that you're trying to separate I, I mean, as, i'm just saying as, as another option if you want to really separate what edc should be spending money on and what they shouldn't be spending money on that's an option you can do as well I mean, I guess, you know, do we have this conversation before we have the goals conversation with the commissions? Does that even make sense? Or do we just pay the $600 and then have the conversation and then decide? I think it makes sense to pay the $600 and then put this on our agenda for the conversation okay. going forward. So I'll move to approve this, um, this grant request for Eagles Landing Maintenance for $600. Last I'll second. For the last. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Aye. 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 Thanks, John. Thank you. I look forward to a good, you know, there's a very good discussion upcoming. I think it's going to be, you know, very helpful, whichever, however we decide it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the people for the bog were just on. I think they just did it. Still here. Uh, oh. Jody, are you there? Up your on mute. Hi, Jody. Still muted. There you go. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so the select board talked before you came on. Uh, they're generally in favor of the sign. Uh, they want to know if you had could describe what the sign will look like, or if you have an image of what the sign could look like. Uh, not really. I mean, I've had some ideas, but of course, it, I'm sure the size of the sign and everything else is regulated and where it's placed. But my original proposal was to have the, uh, maybe not a contest of sorts, but have uh, reach out to some of the area uh, gardening clubs and ask them to maybe submit designs of some sort. Uh, my idea, of, my personal idea was just to have uh, the Eshquibog and have a, a, a lady slipper and then indicating 1.1 miles with an arrow down uh, Garvin Hill Road. So, I mean, it's entirely up to everybody, you know, in, in Boulder. I'm just making the proposal that I think it'd be nice to have a sign. <laughs> I think that sign works. <laughs> well, the problem I have, uh, when I made this proposal uh, publicly a while back, uh, responders fell into basically two camps. Uh, one lauding the idea to share and bring more attention to the bog, and the other group opposing because of the possible increase in traffic on Garvin Hill, plus fear of potential damage to the bog due to rise in number of visitors. So it's not something that you, know, that you just slap a sign up there. There might be opposition to it. Well, good news. Nobody's here to say anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> good. You want to approve it? You are doing. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the enthusiasm. I, yeah. I welcome it. I think it sounds like it would be a great addition, and if it keeps people from wandering onto private property, then wonderful. Yeah. And they wander. I see them going back and forth, and they finally catch up with me if I'm out in the yard. <laughs> yeah, I think I would still love to see a rendering of the yeah. design and the materials to make sure that they're in line mm -hmm. with 
then who would, could he talk to the highway department about the size of the sign? Uh, probably more planning zoning. Planning zoning, okay. Yeah. So if you check with planning and zoning about the size of the sign, that would help actually sign. Jordan, if you just want to go this through me, just email me and I'll keep you in the loop. Okay. Sounds good. Thank Great. you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank good you. Night. All right. Bye bye. Good night. Executive uh, session. Yep. So um, I'll consider a motion to enter an executive session under 1 BSA 313 to discuss contract. Contract. Uh, that have to make a specific, specific finding that premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public body or person involved at a substantial disadvantage. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Sorry, Aye. 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 Scott, sorry. Uh, I think we probably going to go in the back room. Yeah, do you want to use the phone instead of the computer? Yes. Okay, yes. so you'll call Carrie and say Okay. Yes. Okay. I don't want to address bottle. It's uh, bottle water town before. No, no, I, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know if they. Bring a line for it. Okay. Um, approval of the minutes. I'm going to recuse from May 20, May 2nd, as I wasn't there, but otherwise I would move approval of the other minutes. Okay. Do a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 There are a motion to approve the second, the May 3rd. So moved. Do a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. There are a motion to adjourn. So moved. For a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.